Don't you get annoyed with videos that take forever to get to the point? Hopefully I'm not one of those people. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet the yarns for my elephant levy. The yarns I'm using are listed in the description and you can also find a list of the tools I'm using there too. I'd like to take just a few minutes to let you know how this is constructed. You'll start at the bottom and then work your way up. Once we finish and get all the stuffing in there, we need to stitch this close because lovies don't have stuffing in the body and if we don't do this, it probably will all come out into the body. So here's a list of all the stitches and techniques that I'll be using, and you can find tutorials for most of those in the description. Now that that's out of the way, let's get crocheting. Before making your magic ring, leave about an eight inch yarn tail. I'll show you what to do with that later. Then put six single crochets in that ring. Pull the yarn tail tight when you're done and lay that yarn tail in front of your work. For round two, you want to increase in every stitch. That's putting two single crochets into every stitch and that should leave you with 12 stitches for this round. In round three, we have a repeat sequence. Single crochet in the next stitch and then increase. You should be able to repeat that five more times and that'll get you to the end of the round with a total of 18 stitches. Round four also has a repeat sequence, which starts by making a single crochet in the next two stitches. Then you're gonna increase in the stitch after that. Repeat these stitches five more times and you should be at the end of the round with 24 stitches. Before we start round five, make a slip stitch into the next stitch and then chain one. That slip stitch will become the last stitch in the next round, so just go ahead and move your stitch marker over. Let's continue crocheting. For round five, you're gonna need a single crochet into every stitch, but you're gonna work in the back loops only. Your last single crochet should be worked into that slip stitch that you made before we started this round. Okay, make sure you have that white yarn nearby because we're gonna need it in this next round. For round six, put a single crochet in the next nine stitches. ahead and yarn over to finish off that last stitch, we need to go ahead and switch over to that white yarn. Now you're going to make a puff stitch, not into the next stitch, but the stitch just below that. Yarn over and insert your hook into the stitch. Yarn over and pull through the stitch. You want to pull these loops on your hook all the way up to the same height as the single crochets that you're working in. Now yarn over and insert your hook back into the same stitch. Yarn over and pull through the stitch, making sure to bring those loops up to the same height of the single crochets that you're making. Let's do that one more time. Yarn over and insert your hook back into the same stitch. Yarn over and pull through the stitch. Now usually you would yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook, but we need to change back over to the gray yarn. So grab that gray yarn and pull it through all the loops on your hook. That's one toenail, or should I say fingernail, made. We need to single crochet into the next two stitches with this gray yarn and switch over to the white yarn just before finishing that second stitch. Now, I made a mistake when I was filming this. I only made one single crochet before switching over to the white yarn. You're gonna go ahead and make the last puff stitch for this round. So this should give you a total of three of those fingernails. When you finish that off, make sure you switch back over to the gray yarn. Then you'll finish this round by putting a single crochet into each remaining stitch. You can also cut off that white yarn tail because we don't need it anymore. I usually tie the two white yarn tails together and just leave them inside my work. Nobody's going to see them. Round seven is nothing special, just single crochet into all 24 stitches. 
I'll just skip ahead to round eight. We have a bit of a repeat sequence here. Single crochet in the next 10 stitches and then make a decrease. In rounds nine and 10, you'll single crochet into all 22 stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead to round 11 because I don't think you wanna watch me make all those stitches. We're gonna start reducing the total number of stitches for each round just a few times. So in round 11, single crochet in the next nine stitches and then make a decrease. You should have enough stitches remaining in this round to repeat that once more. Let me jump ahead to the next round. For round 12, single crochet in the next eight stitches. and then make a decrease. Again, you should be able to repeat that sequence once more, and when you finish the round, you should have 18 stitches. In round 13, let's put a single crochet in the next seven stitches, and then make a decrease. Repeat that once more to make it to the end of the round with a total of 16 stitches. Once you're finished with this round, you don't have to worry anymore about decreasing for a while because in rounds 14 and all the way up to round 18, you're only going to single crochet in each stitch. This is where having a row counter comes in handy, so you know what rows you've completed. If you ever doubt yourself thinking you forgot to use that row counter, just go back down to the round five where you crocheted into those back loops and count up. Once you've completed round 18, take a break and add some stuffing into your work. I try not to add too much because I don't want my hook grabbing all that stuffing while I crochet. Now that that's done, just continue putting a single crochet into every stitch for rounds 19 all the way up to round 23. I crocheted those rounds off camera, so I'm just gonna take you to round 24. For this round, we're not gonna complete the whole thing. We only need to put a single crochet into the next 13 stitches, and this should leave you just right above where that middle fingernail is. Once you're there, fasten off the gray yarn, but leave about an eight inch tail because we're gonna use that to close up the top of the piece. But before we close this up, add some more stuffing, just lightly. You don't wanna overpack this because then the arms will stick straight out instead of laying to the sides of the elephant. So let's go ahead and close up the top of this arm. Thread your darning needle onto the yarn tail that's coming off the top of the arm. You know, the one that we fastened off. Now fold the top of the arm in half using the last stitch that we made in round 24 as kind of the starting point. Then insert your needle into the back loop of that next stitch from where we fastened off. And then into the back loop of the last stitch that we made in round 24. Pulling everything tight will bring those two stitches together, and I think that's called a whip stitch. You'll want to continue whip stitching these back loops together, and just go ahead and line them up and go all the way across until you get to the end. Now we need to do something with this yarn tail. We can't just leave it like this. So weave it through a few of the whip stitches across the top and then exit somewhere in the middle. Then I make a knot around the nearest loop from those whip stitches. After that, I can weave this tail back down into the arm and just shove the rest of it in there. Nobody's gonna ever see it again. When you're done closing everything up, you wanna mark the front loop of the last stitch in round 24, as this is gonna help you crochet it into the body later on in the pattern. Then, starting on the opposite side of that arm, mark the eighth front loop. You should have a total of 16 loops that are showing. So we're really just trying to divide that in half. Eight on one side, eight on the other. This last step is completely optional, but I think you should take the time to do it because after a while, these arms are gonna become very rounded on the bottom. So let's go ahead and sculpt it so it stays a bit more flat over time. Thread your needle with the yarn tail that's coming out of that bottom. I'm gonna use this super long needle because it's gonna make this job way easier. You wanna insert the needle into the center of the magic ring, go straight through the center of the arm all the way up to the top. You wanna to exit somewhere near the middle where all those whip stitches were made. As you pull this yarn tail through, you're gonna see that the bottom of the arm gets pulled in just a little bit. You're gonna go ahead and make a knot at the top so that bottom stays pulled in a little bit. Weave in the tail just like we did with the previous one and you're done. Here are the two finished arms side by side. I'm sure I could have stuffed that one on the left a bit more, but I think I was rushing when I made that. 
I think you can also see the error that I made of putting one single crochet between those nails. The arm on the right has two single crochet between the nails and you can see they're much more spread apart. I don't know, maybe it looks better with just one single crochet in the middle. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. As I continue to develop the pattern for this lovey, you might find some more tutorials on it pop up here on the channel. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy videos like this. That's gonna be it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stick around for more. Thanks for watching.